was supposed to have a break and then I started TikTok and then yeah. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while and I'm so happy to be back. But the thing is that this video is a collab with Indie Andy and we have two parts of this video and this is the first one. So be sure to jump right over to Andy's channel after this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, I'm 20 years old and I make content about autism here on YouTube. So, here you see, I have a friend with me today. What's your name? <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Andy. I run the YouTube channel Indie Andy. And basically the same as Sarah. I also make content about autism here on YouTube. And yeah, basically, we're gonna do a video together, which Sarah thought of all of us all by a lumsome. And it's a great idea. <laughs> do you wanna say what that is? Yes, so today we're going to do Never have I ever and I know that this is an old trend and we are going to do never have I ever autistic version after you've seen this video please jump over to Andy's channel so let's just get to it okay stop <laughs> okay never have I ever got fixated on something hard and fast you can't done okay free Two, one. <laughs> of course, that is what the special interests are for. Give us an example then. Uh, one, for example, <laughs> I love High School Musical more than anything in the world. Mm -hmm. I love The Sims. <laughs> okay, so I can have a lot of examples, but I really want to hear some of yours too. <laughs> Okay, well, um, a very recent one for me was listening to every single Queen studio album, so the band Queen. Go I've on. always been a fan of the band Queen, but I've only really listened to the singles. Uh, so I kind of just thought, why not actually listen to the studio albums? Because I've never done it before. I, like, I prefer studio albums to singles anyway, so I thought, why not? I actually found songs which I actually prefer to the singles. There's the song Rain Must Fall by Queen. Uh, that was a really good one. And Rain Must. Rain Must Fall. Another one, Keep Passing Through the Open Window, I think it's called. I think. It's so clear that you've really like dove, dove in into it. Is that a word? <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of just di yeah, I kind of just dived into it because I was yeah, I was just I was just like, like I say, I've, I've never actually listened to uh, the Queen Studio albums before, so I thought, why not? <laughs> I had a Beatles fixation too, so I love the Beatles, but I don't like. It's not just like the Beatles; it's analyzing their music and analyzing the music history around that period. Oh, like yeah, I, I love doing that as I well. I love talking music history. We have to make a video just talking about mu music history. That would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, I for us at least, it's so fun. I didn't know we had like so much in common. Like I didn't know you were so into music. No, well, I, I, listen, I listen to a lot of, uh, I literally listened to loads of music anyway and I was a music student and playing bands and stuff. Cool. To be fair, I didn't I didn't know you had a thing for music actually until the other day. I think I saw you singing on TikTok, I believe. I'm uh, taking a bachelor in music, so I'm going to be a music teacher. Really? Stop. Never have I ever talk to myself in public okay <laughs> one two, two three <laughs> okay tell me tell me where and tell me why i do it all of the time i just do it everywhere but like which kind of situations do you usually talk to yourself the most um when i'm actually in the middle of doing something maybe it's work related or something like that. I usually do it at the store. Walk around there and I'm like, oh, I need some grapes. Grapes, grapes, grapes. Hmm, where is it? Like, I'm, I'm like that in public. I look like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I do the same thing. The, I, I, to, to be perfectly honest, just to generally say, like when I've gone to 
when I go to the shops, for example, and I need to find something, I'll just go. Oh, I need to find bread. Where's the bread? And I'll go looking for the bread, yeah. and then I'll be like, oh, there's the bread. <laughs> it's kind of annoying as well. Just I'm going off on a tangent, yeah. but I kind of need to make this point here, and I'm hoping people that watch this will 100% get behind this. It's really annoying in supermarkets, shops, and things like that where you have to get food and stuff. You go to the place where you know it was last time, but then it's changed and it's gone to a completely different place. It's the most infuriating thing in the whole world. I have to like turn in here because I have celiac disease and that means I can't eat regular bread and pasta and stuff like that. It needs to be gluten free. Yeah. and that sort of things has always been in one type of place in the one store that I go to. <laughs> and I think that's the worst part when they don't even change up the whole thing. It's just this is that one, this one thing. thing is now moved there. I mean, why do you do that? Can't what? you just like? Let it be where it was. <laughs> let it be. Let it be. <laughs> let it be. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. <laughs> then we're just jumping to my ball. Yeah. Okay, so say say stop. Stop. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Never have I ever had a meltdown in public. One, two, three. Okay, uh -huh. so tell me, <laughs> so tell me how that went. The main example that I can think of was in college. Myself and my friend, we were doing a performance at uh, college because it was a music course that I was doing. It didn't go to plan. I was very nervous. She was very nervous. Afterwards, it was really weird because everyone was praising how I did. I don't know. I just felt so much like a failure that I was just like, do you know I just need to go outside. When it's me in meltdowns, I tend to like want to be alone in that moment so pretty much i went outside i started sobbing my eyes out because i was like that didn't do as well as I, as as well as i thought i would do that's kind of the thing with me and i've never actually talked about before actually weirdly enough so this is quite vulnerable for me right now that moment it was sobbing and just uh, feeling quite sorry for myself to be honest you've never actually had a meltdown in public have you okay so the thing is that it's easy for me to do this the reason why that is is because i hear meltdown and i think oh the times where i rip my hair out and bang my head against the wall and hit myself so i can tell you this one story and you can help you decide if it was a meltdown or not okay i got bullied when i was younger mm -hmm. it was the year before high school some boys were like picking on me and one of them had done that for the last three years and one time he came out and started like picking on me and stuff when I was so overwhelmed and it was because it was so much noise and it was like just a wall of sound and I just had to leave the classroom and I sat outside and trying to rap write this English poem because I really struggled with English but I sat there and then he came and picked on me and then I started screaming and I just remember everything was like a black wall. It's the only way I can explain it. And he went into the classroom because he was kind of scared because I've never reacted like this ever at school or anywhere else. And I started throwing chairs around the room. I started hitting him in the stomach and then I started bawling my eyes out and I thought it was one of my panic attacks but then I ran out of the classroom and I started hyperventilating but when I look back on it it sounds like it was just enough and it was so many sounds and so many things that I had to like I don't know cope with so I don't know maybe it was meltdown from the sounds of it it kind of does sound like that so you've had like multiple things go on and it's just piled up and piled up then you've kind of just reached that point of I can't take this anymore and just gone throwing chairs flipping tables <laughs> from the from the sounds of it. Yeah, I would, I would say so, especially like with afterwards. Because I never actually thought of that like 
after I got my diagnosis and stuff, I had all those excuses for reacting like that. So I didn't even, I didn't even think about it when we did this. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> The more you know. Is it my go or is it your go? No, you've just done I one, think it's so your it's go. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Right. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Never have I ever thought about how a conversation should have gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to count down? Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. Is, is there been an example you can think of or is it just it, is it just a general thing? Well, one time I had a conversation with a lovely girl. She looked a lot like somebody that bullied me in middle school and it wasn't her fault at all and I didn't blame her or anything. And then she started asking about me and my life and then I said to her that uh, you actually look like somebody that bullied me. Yeah. The thing is that I, I think I said that in the wrong way because I was only saying it as a joke, not because it wasn't true, but because I just thought it was funny. Like, it didn't mean she looked a certain way, it was just she looked like somebody bullied me. And I think that that hurt her, and she told a lot of people afterwards that I think she was like the person that was bullying me in, in middle school, and I never said that. But I think maybe the way I said it didn't come off the right way. I, I don't know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like one of the things and then you have all like the when you're overthinking and stuff like that of course but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah what do you think um for me um uh, when i wrote this one it was kind of that thing of when you're i don't know just generally talking to someone but then afterwards you kind of think of the scenarios of how it you could have done better so like one of the things for me was i don't know if i you know was talking to someone uh about a thing like a project that we were gonna do but they came up with all of the ideas and stuff and like i felt like i couldn't like interject because that's the thing with me i feel like it's kind of hard for me to interject sometimes <sighs> yeah But then after the conversations happened, it'll just it'll just be like, oh man, I wish I said that, or oh, I wish it played out in this scenario, or sometimes I kind of wish that I was just a pro boss and gone, yo, we're doing it this way. This is how it's happening. But it's just like, it, it just it just doesn't happen that way sometimes. It t typically happens a lot. Quite a, uh, it, to be honest, it happens a lot at work. <laughs> to be honest, someone was. Um, give an example or say something and I'm just like oh, please please I just want to interject and just be like no just don't do this and it just don't I just do can't, it it's like I just, I just can't get the words out you know and I can add to that and say that I would probably be the person that you think you should be in that situation I and I would want to be able to do the opposite because I'm like I'm, I'm here with all my IPs and I'm just running through and I don't care about anybody and I'm like, oh I have these ideas and I have all this and this and that mm -hmm. and I don't listen to anyone. I, I think I do. I really think I do. I think that I'm listening to everybody and taking their ideas and just like adding on to it. But yeah. I'm like how I actually come across is like I have this idea. Somebody says something, I say no, but we can do this, you know? <laughs> so, so I would really love to be able to turn that conversation around and me actually being more able to listen to other people more than interjecting all the time and just taking the lead on everything because everybody has a right to say their ideas, right? We wouldn't be in a great team, maybe. <laughs> I would just like run <laughs> over you. <laughs> uh, but be, this has gone very well. To be to be perfect to be perfectly fair, um, the conversations I have had with you, you know, at first I was very nervous, obviously, because um, I'm just very nervous talking to people the first time. But once I get to know people, it's a lot, it's a lot easier. To be to be to be honest, I don't think you you I don't think you run. I don't think you ran over me that much <laughs> during that first conversation. But I was 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Okay, never have I ever felt like I was different than the people around me. One, two, three. I think that's a no-brainer because even though I got my diagnosis later than you, I, I felt all the way through middle school and high school and now my studies. I've always felt that I'm standing there and I'm an alien in some sort of way that I'm in disguise and I just have to act normal so nobody sees who I really am in some way and that's not because I have low self-confidence at all it's just that I know from experience that me being exactly how I would write out of my brain would lead to a lot of conflicts so of course, and I felt different all my life. Um, and how about you? You had your diagnosis way earlier than me. Yeah, way earlier because I was a kid. So um, I didn't find out that I was autistic until I was 10. Before that, I kind of got this feeling that I was different from my peers, mainly because I was going to classes with people who weren't in my normal class, whatever. Normal in air quotations, because there's no such thing as normal really, but uh, there was that kind of separation there So I kind of always knew that I was different and to be honest You don't really get an understanding of that until you're in your teens and you know adulthood and stuff No, I, I always felt that I was different. I, I didn't feel like I was growing at the same rate as other people I think as it was a clear indication of that because you know people like 16 17 they were talking about and all of this stuff and here was me 16 17 year old me being like what's the big deal like people would talk about it all all of the time as if it was like this magical gift from the gods and it's just like what I, I just I just want to go home and play on my Xbox I think when it comes to specific topics as well it, it kind of makes you feel different in that sense but that may say more about the people that you're with rather than you sometimes. I think that for a lot of people I was just like all the other girls but the thing is that what made me different it is that all the girls were like oh boys 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 and I was like let me find somebody I can pretend to like so I can fit in with the rest, so I can be in the conversation. And I never liked any of those. It's just, it was a way for me to actually, yeah, for me to actually fit in in some way. And I actually got together with a boy in like seventh grade. I was like 12. <laughs> and it was a good friend of mine. I didn't like him. And he probably didn't like me either because it was seventh grade. I can't like anybody, it seems, before I actually know them and I like them for their personality. I think that actually is a thing that with autistic people it takes a lot longer before we're, we're ready for that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. I know it was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. So now, please jump over to Andy's channel where we have the second part. We talked for five hours. I think it's a lot of things who can help a lot of people and maybe you. Please check that out. Thank you for watching. And I love you guys and I've missed you guys. And seriously, please just talk to me in the comments. Like, tell me how you've been. What is happening in your life? Seriously, I can't say this enough. I've seriously missed you guys. I didn't know I could miss somebody so much over the internet, but I do. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.